Hi, I'm Jerry Harms, the hydroponics guy. Uh, today we're going to look at transplanting a Phalaenopsis orchid into a hydroponic system. Uh, this lonely Phalaenopsis was uh, given to me by my neighbor and they want to repot it and uh, of course a hydroponic planter would be the thing to repot it in. Uh, this is very typical of an orchid that you would get at the grocery store or any kind of mass market and that is first of all it's a Phalaenopsis, second, second of all um, it's in a uh, plastic pot, has no holes in the side, nothing like that, and it's in an um, outer ceramic. So, this plant has a couple of issues and I want to look at them before we transplant. Number one is, it has a yellow sticky card on here and I can see it has some fungus gnats um, on the card. And that's not unusual when you look at what this orchid has been planted in. Number two is, as you can probably see, the leaves are limp. And the reason that the leaves are limp is because they don't have enough moisture in them. They don't have enough moisture in them because the roots are not active. It's not because the plant has not been watered enough. In fact, it's probably been overwatered. It's too wet. Um, the leaves are limp or the leaves are not getting moisture because the roots aren't active. And the reason that the roots aren't active is because they're planted in a pot that has no air circulation whatsoever and secondly they're in moss the orchid is growing in moss and this moss stays wet forever and ever and this is what your roots end up looking like and when you have roots that look like this they are not working and they're not delivering moisture to the plant so um, let's repot this thing let's put it into a hydroponic system and uh, i think we're going to make some big improvements Okay, so the first thing we have to do here is to remove all of this moss from the roots. Now, I'm going to uh, speed this up a little bit, but I want, to, I want you to see exactly how much work this is or what to do when removing all this moss. So here we go. When you run into roots like this, they're no good. How to tell the difference between a good root and a bad root is, on a good root, if you squeeze it, it's supple. A bad root is flat. These roots are all flat. And in fact, we're gonna find out that there's hardly any roots at all growing in this moss. going to use the scissors and I'm going to cut away all the bad roots. And guess what? There's no active roots in that pot at all. The orchid was sustaining itself on these aerial roots, the roots that were growing on the outside of the pot. These roots are getting air and they're able to breathe so they're able to grow. Everything that was down inside the pot is dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. This is not unusual. You'll find this um, many, many times on orchids that have limp leaves. But don't worry, we can fix this and this orchid will bounce back. We ended up with, this is what was in the pot and this is why the orchid was struggling. Uh, the roots weren't breathing and there you are, just a bunch of dead stuff. We're going to repot it into this planter and um, the Lack of pebbles in this planter are going to encourage new root growth, so I'm not really worried about this. This will come back. The other thing I want to show you is I'm going to take a pruners and I'm actually removing a lot of the spine on this plant. And there we are. I'm going to take this to the sink now to uh, rinse it off, although there's not much on it. And this is what we're going to pot into our new plant. So let's go to the sink. Okay, we're back from the sink. As you can see, I washed everything off. Now I'm gonna make an executive level decision here and uh, change my pot size. Pot size is kind of important when you're transplanting an orchid because you wanna establish a wet dry cycle or it goes back to what I was talking about initially and that is the roots need to breathe. Orchid roots need air as much as they need water to grow. So they need to breathe. And in our system, 
Uh, you want to develop a good wet dry cycle so that you get the moisture and the nutrients into the root system, but then they also get air. Um, so the five inch grow system is normally what I would transplant uh, an orchid this size into. But after seeing the root system here, I still could transplant in here, but I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna be safe and I'm gonna drop it down to a four inch pot because I think a four inch pot's gonna dry out a little bit quicker um, than a five inch pot would. Uh, so, all right, we're ready to plant our uh, orchid into our new hydroponic system. Again, this is a four inch pot. This is gonna be an easy transplant because I don't have any roots to deal with. So what I've done is I've soaked the pebbles overnight, or you can soak them for a couple of hours in a KLN solution. Uh, KLN uh, encourages new root growth and it helps uh, resist disease. I like to use this in place of nutrients for the first four to six weeks, especially on a plant like this where I really wanna have new roots. I might use this for two months in place of nutrients um, on my new transplant. In any event, I soak the pebbles in a KLN solution, uh, about two capfuls per gallon of water, and then you save the water and that's what you can use to water uh, your new transplant with. So, transplanting this guy, the first thing I do is cover the bottom of the pot with pebbles. Then, holding my new plant in place, I simply add pebbles to this side and to this side. Pack them down. If I had roots, uh, I'm not concerned about crushing the roots because the pebbles are round and uh, uh, they won't crush the roots. Now, the other thing that I want to point out here is I have buried those uh, aerial roots that were sticking out of the pot. They will grow nicely into the pebbles. And in fact, whenever I transplant aerial roots, sometimes you'll see Phalaenopsis with roots that go way, way out like that. That's absolutely normal because what they're doing is they're looking for um, a tree or a rock or something to anchor the plant to. So if I have aerial roots in, during the transplant that will fit down inside the pot, I bury them. If they don't comfortably go in the pot, I just leave them stick out of the pot. That's absolutely normal. So that's how easy it is to transplant this new guy into its new hydroponic pot. I insert the water gauge, put it in the outer pot, and there we are. Here's our new orchid sitting in its new hydroponic planter. Plant care for my new hydroponic Phalaenopsis orchid. This plant didn't have any roots whatsoever, so I have to be really careful with the watering. So like I said, I use KLN rooting solution in place of nutrients. There's gonna be no nutrients used on this plant until I really start to see good new growth. So I use KLN in place of any nutrients and my watering uh, technique is water it until the gauge moves, the little red thing in the gauge moves and then stop. I come back in one week, check it by lifting the plant and checking to see if there's any water at the bottom of the pot. If there's any water at the bottom of the pot, I dump it out. Don't do that at your floor at home. I dump it out and uh, let the plant sit dry for a week or so, so that those roots get air. I don't want a lot of water in there because uh, I don't have any roots to drink it. Now, another way that you can water these plants that are uh, struggling to grow new roots is you simply use the water gauge as a handle, take the plant to the sink, run water or pour KLN solution through the pebbles, let it drain in the sink, and then return the plant to its outer pot with no standing water at the base, of course. Then repeat that once a week and you can water your plant that way also. Now for future growth on this little guy, these leaves that are curling on the bottom, uh, I'm gonna lose those. I'm sure I'm gonna lose those. They're gonna turn yellow, they're gonna fall off. I'm not worried about that. They're never gonna grow supple again because they're too far gone. What I'm looking for is this new growth tip at the top. I wanna see big new juicy leaves come out at the top that are nice, big and fat. Um, after probably six weeks, eight weeks, I can water this plant to a half on the gauge 
And, but then in two weeks time, I want to find the plant totally, completely dry before I water it again. And I believe that with proper care and a good summer growth, we will have flowers on this plant next winter.